wait and see what uh, the first move of the game is, but let me know what we should play. Let's see, e4. What are we feeling? All right, I see the most Kairo Khan. For the first time, we're going to go with the, you know, the majority rule. Kairo Khan. I will play, uh, yeah, c6, d5. I actually see more and more people play with uh, two knights these days. Um, I mean, I'll just tell you. Straight up and down, you know, <laughs> on my mama, I have never seen anyone play b3 in my life <laughs> i haven't i've been playing chess for a long time i have never seen this move wow well i can definitely tell you that pawn takes pawn i mean i would have played that move if he defended it so if he's not gonna defend it no brainer right gotta take Okay, so now knight c3. So, hmm. I mean, uh, definitely we want to defend this pawn. I'm trying to think what, what his moves are actually intending here. Maybe he just wants to go there. I, I don't think he's going to be able to take this pawn. Queen e2. That's the only other way to hit the pawn, and it drops this pawn. So I think we just start with knight f6, right? Defend what white just attacked. If bishop g5, we could play bishop f5, but I have another move after bishop g5 that I was going to try, which was queen a5. Hitting the bishop and hitting the knight because of that move b3. Um, but okay, that didn't happen. g3, so again, my opponent is looking to do something like this. Bishop g2 and take the pawn. Let's have a think here. It's gotten to the point in this game where I now have, you know, the spidey senses are tingling. This is a lot of, I would say, unusual moves. So it's really got me thinking, how can I take advantage of it? Um, Bishop g4 looks like a reasonable move. Bishop f5, just to defend the pawn ahead of time, is going to be great. Bishop f5, e6, and eventually bishop to b4 looks quite good. So those are the moves I'm looking at. I'm just wondering if bishop to g4 um, should be played on its own. And I'm, I'm almost getting to the answer being yes. Because, for example, if I play here, and my opponent plays there, then I actually have a very nice option, which is to bring my bishop back to f5. Because I know this bishop wants to go here. And I know that knight wants to go there. So if I'm able to put his bishop on that square, that is the worst of both worlds for him. The knight can't go there anymore, and the bishop can't go there. And if I go here and the knight goes there first, well then maybe I can play something like bishop f3 to hit the rook. So I'm more and more drawn to the move bishop g4, and I think I'm going to go for it. Queen of d2 can be played by white, but then that's just should be beneficial for me. I'm just developing with, uh, with tempo. So we'll see how he reacts to this. Um, it's like three different moves, four different moves. I think f3 is totally reasonable. But then after f3, I am clearly up a pawn. Right? Then there's no debate. Nobody can say nothing. That is a clean extra pawn for me. So I'm happy with that too. Right? Here I have a double pawn. Maybe he's going to start attacking it, try to win it back. After f3, that's a clean pawn. Knight takes f3. We do have the option to play bishop takes and queen takes d4 to get another pawn. So I'm kind of uh, weighing my options there. Do we want to do that? I'm, feel I'm in a greedy mood this morning, you know? I could be tempted. Say that I won't. Bishop takes f3, queen d4. And he's looking kind of nice, I'm not going to lie. I think it's the answer. I mean, e6 is also going to be a good move. Um, 
to you know try to get the bishop out 100 percent. so i'm definitely thinking about more aggressive types of moves queen a5 um it's all about to me b3 has been a big weakness this game even e5 to get the bishop out even quicker might be the idea but i tell you this is the fact that that is on the table as a backup plan like i noticed that move in two seconds right so i have an extra pawn waiting for me if i don't see anything else so that's just a nice way to start off my calculation right it's like if your plan b is a, another extra pawn that's a pretty good plan b all right so e5 and e6 are probably the two other main moves. Queen a5, I'm not loving. It just doesn't look like it does anything. Um, e6 is simple, so I'm going to calculate it after. e5 takes, takes, loses the knight. And then I hit the rook. Um, if knight takes, of course we lose the queen. If queen e2, probably I can continue with bishop to... Uh, b4 pin another knight and look to get castled if queen takes e5 maybe king d7 with rook e8 coming plus i'm threatening both knights in that case so loving e5 in this position everything we just calculated this this and this all seem to fail and this is a hyper aggressive move which will probably yield some good results notice how in this position i'm almost about to achieve something which is quite unique I'll have two pins against two knights and no pawns protecting either one of those knights. Very fragile, right? This position is very, very fragile for, for white right now. Are you allowed to comment some moves? Absolutely. Of course, you guys can uh, chat about moves. The, the one thing I did before this speed run was I hired a very... Very prominent legal team to fight all the cheating allegations. And I did that so that you guys could type in chat. So, you're welcome. Okay, bishop e2. Perhaps a very good move. Unpinning the knight. Now, the number one move on my mind is bishop to b4. Um, because it... It's with tempo. So I'm really liking the look of bishop to b4, and I think I'm just going to play it. Uh, pins the knight. Allows me to get castled next turn. Yes, I want to maybe go here. Yes, I might want to push, but all of those moves are going to be better with my bishop on b4. So this is a, a move I'll play without too much calculation. I'm not really analyzing, oh, is it better to go here or, or take? It's just my instinct tells me that whatever good stuff is going to happen from me taking or pushing or making other threats is going to be magnified if I have another piece in the attack. And that's just basic chess principle, I guess. Okay. So, bishop to b2. Now we have a situation where there's no way to break this pin. So now I'm starting to think about things like this, about things like this, about things like this. These are all moves that add pressure to that knight. And guess what? White is not going to be able to do anything about it, right? Bishop d2, at least when the pressure mounts on the knight, you could move the knight, right? You could move it away. Now you can't move it away. So I'm really only thinking in this position about this move and then these two knight moves, right? So bishop d2 to unpin was a little bit better. Bishop b2, I, you can't blame white, right? What was the move they played on move three of this game? It was b3. Of course they've been planning to put their bishop there the whole game. So you really can't blame them. Um, there's a couple good options here. I'll tell you the first one that I, I really like, which is just nice and simple, is queen a5. I feel like queen a5 might net me perhaps the most material. Um, but I'll tell you something else. Keeping it simple, bishop takes knight, bishop takes knight, pawn takes pawn, just wins a piece. It's the cleanest piece. The, the only thing about moves like that is, you know, white might castle, bring a rook to e1, 
and my king has to move. Now, it's completely winning for black, but in this situation, I'm going to elect to keep a little bit more life in the position, a little bit more, uh, a, a few more tactics. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely thinking about queen a5. How is that going to be reacted to? Queen d3, let's say. If e4 there, queen e3. You know, I'm not, I'm not winning anything just, you know, exactly on the, on the spot there. So I think I'm more interested in, in like a knight d5 kind of move. If knight e4, queen d3, my knight's actually being hit. So I don't like the fact that white defends the knight and hits my knight. So I'm not a big fan of knight d4. So I think knight d5 and queen a5 are kind of the moves. And I'm probably, probably going to do them um, in that order. So let's start with queen to a5, a very clear threat. White needs to deal with it. I can only see two queen moves that are even worth considering. Queen d3, it walks into this move, which looks like a, a devastating fork, but, you know, there is queen e3 there, which pins the pawn to my king. Now, in that position, of course, I can continue by castling, but it's just a longer calculation. It's not so straightforward. And I'll be honest with you, um, chess q corn, you're 100% correct that queen d2 gets wrecked by knight e4. But I will, I will be honest, I'm less enthused about winning a queen for two pieces than I am about winning one piece. I would rather win just one of my opponent's pieces. And I may be pushing it here, but I truly believe if I have a piece and you have nothing, I prefer that than if I have a queen and you have two pieces. Because there are some positions where two pieces outplay a queen. You have to still be, you know... Very accurate, it's still pretty tricky. Whereas a knight, an extra knight beats, like it's just better in every single position in chess. It doesn't matter. So um, queen d2, I, I don't know if I would have played knight d4, honestly. I might have considered knight d5 as well to just win a piece straight up. Not even given, uh, give him an option to take two pieces for it. Um, this move, however, he's basically not reacting to the threat. Although he's making his own threat, the fact that mine is with a check is quite significant. So um, I think we just go straight away with this. I'm thinking about other moves like bringing the knight in, but there's no point in letting him castle. So we'll start by taking this. It's with a check. We want to take back with the queen. We'll be hitting the rook. So if the queen blocks, we take the rook. And it's possible we just clean up the whole back rank there. Um, if white takes, we take back and the king moves. You know, let's say here, I could see a checkmate happening in only a couple moves. Right? King there, all of a sudden bishop h3. King here, all of a sudden knight e4. King here, all of a sudden checkmate on e3. If takes, takes, and the king goes here, knight e4. If the king goes back to g1 or f1, there's going to be checkmate with those two checks. And if the king goes to g2 and bishop h3 anyway, the king takes on h3, knight f2 check, wins at least the queen. Maybe we even can try for a checkmate there instead. So after bishop takes c3, queen c3, knight d2 may be the only move. Right? Which is a little bit of an unpleasant thought. I'm not sure that's entirely obvious right now. And in that position, I don't profess to say that my opponent is surviving at all. All right, king here. Basically, I can treat this exactly the same as if he took and then played king here. Right? So king f2, pretty much the same thing. If knight e4, king here, bishop to h3 will net the queen. I also may just throw in a check, but the thing about the check is if he goes king g2, I don't really have anything after that. I don't. Right? That's kind of the, that's kind of the end of the line for me. Um, 
So I'm trying to find a way to make everything work here. Bishop takes b2, of course, is a whole entire bishop. Very tempting. But I think this game is calling for a uh, knight e4 type of move to be played. Knight e4, the only difference in the position is king e3. So how do we deal with king e3? Let's say I play queen c5 check, king takes knight. It's like, <laughs> am I getting a mate there? I signed up for a mate. Where, where is it? Well, I think this is a good way to start. My knight's under attack, so I, I can't really take this. And if I check the king first, the king goes there, and I, I'm not precisely sure my, um, my next move. So I do kind of like uh, knight e4 check first. One thing is like, you know, if I'm if the thing that worries me the most in this game is a king on e4, I'm good. You know, I'm <laughs> there's there's worse things, worse problems to have. All right, so bishop takes b2. Um, Always an option. Uh, another move that I was considering, which I thought was kind of interesting, was check, king takes e4, and then I, I almost want to just cancel. Because if I play f5, the king goes back to d3. Great position for me, but maybe not a forced mate. I think it will result in mate, but it's not like 100% forced. So, yeah, in, the, in this position, I think bishop takes... King takes on um, King takes on e4 will most likely result in a checkmate for me. Takes takes the move I like or that I'm a bit partial to is um, f5. Kind of like f5. It looks like it chases the king up the board the most. Either king f4, or if he takes en passant, then I have access to another square on f5. So I do kind of like that one. Um, I'm, I guess I'm between this move and just taking. Just taking. Both look very good. Queen c5. King here. f5, king d3. I'm not seeing... Uh, I'm not seeing anything there exactly. I mean, it looks good. But I'm not sure that it's... I'm not sure that it's winning. I'm going to take... I'm going to take the bishop. I'll be hitting a rook as well. And the reason that I, I guess, can play these types of positions without too much concern is I know that the worst thing that's going to happen to me is I might just have to take material. Let's say, like, I fail a calculation, I, I miss something, or the king has too many escape squares. I can always just bail out and just take material, right? That's the, that's the truth. So that's, that's reassuring. He plays queen d3. He doesn't take my knight, which... Of course, is a good thing. Um, so if queen here, king takes the knight, f5, for example, pawn takes f5. I'm not sure that I'm getting a mate. I'm getting something close to a mate. But maybe not quite checkmate. Because the pesky knight it seems to be covering all the squares that I want. Like e5. That's the real square that I want. Bishop f5 check. King f4. It's like, 
How long can this guy last here? <laughs> so I, I, I think obviously we'll do it, but um, it would be a little bit nicer. It truly would be a little bit nicer if there was a, a force mate. So start with a check. Again, there are many moves here. This is not completely forcing, but I'm going to start with a check. Knight d4 can be played. King f4 can be played. King takes knight can be played. I mean, obviously queen here, but that's maybe the silliest. So I want to keep hunting the king, you know, force it forward. The knight's covering the two retreating squares, so this king always had to step forward. Um, and the, I guess the other nice thing about f5 is that my opponent is rated 600, so this might not even occur. And after king there, then we're in a situation where the king is completely trapped except that square, right? The only way out is to go forward. So in this particular position, I am quite drawn to a basic move like h6. h6 prepares nice little mating net, mating pattern. So h6 is, I think, just a very calm move, but comes with a lot of poison with g5. And remember, we're still attacking this rook. Let's see how resourceful he is. He definitely has an idea what I'm, uh, what I'm intending here. Yeah, the, the plan is to mix these two ideas, or these three ideas, this and this, because the knight is covering both, right? And both are checkmate. So that should already give you an idea of how we can arrange a, a mate here. Right? If one of his pieces covers two things, we should be able to use that against him. Rook d1, and to his credit, he's starting to go on the offensive with queen of d8. In this position, I have two tempting options. If I go g5, takes, queen e5 is mate. If I go g5, takes, bishop e5 is mate. So I can mate with the queen, I can mate with the bishop. If I take first with the queen, the problem is the king has a square to run back to. But if I take first with the bishop then g5 will be checkmate. So, do I mate with the queen? Do I mate with the bishop? Or do I mate with the pawn? The answer is obvious. We mate with the lowest value piece. So we take with the bishop, which means we mate with the pawn. There is only one answer to that question. And every piece here is participating in some way. Even the knight blocking the king, the pawn blocking the king, the bishop guarding the pawn, the pawn guarding the bishop. And checkmate. Always the lowest value piece, checkmate. Thank you, Una Karoshi. The prime for eight months. Swans loons, 22 months with prime as well. Pose Rook, a brand new sub with us. Welcome, Pose Rook. Spudge, 18 months, tier three. Go, Spudge. I, I was about to say, I haven't seen you in a little while. And it's been such a, a little while that you haven't seen the new KO. Goddamn. What do you think? 
Billy Badass, 53 months with Prime. Sphinxy9, 18 month resub. And the Kakuler, 14 months with Prime. Thank you guys. Let's look at the game review here. Let's talk about that opening for a second. Pose Rook, stars, buddy. Stars for me. All right, so um, yeah, let's let's look at the the game for a second here. B three, obvious mistake, right? It it just does not even deal with the center pawn. It's for sure a blunder. We take and white goes here. Okay, so now we want to defend this, and we saw G three, and now. In this position, you know, the GM radar was going off. Something was wrong here. He is spending too many times on pawn moves that are not a part of this opening. I have an extra pawn. We decided to go bishop g4. Because now we're hitting the queen. And if he plays queen d2, I mean, he's kind of blocking his bishop. He's not developing any pieces. I'm developing with tempo. That's good for me. And as I said, if bishop e2 then the very nasty move would be bishop to f5. And you can see here that the engine supports bishop f5. It's a funny looking move, right? Why would you develop your bishop here, bring his piece out, and then bring your bishop back? I'll present to you guys another example of this, just so you know sort of what we're talking about. Um... Have you guys seen this opening? Right, and queen takes d5, great move, but you know, then, then the knight comes out and hits your queen. So, of course, after knight f6, now it's the case that if white just plays knight f3, black takes back with the knight, and the knight is great there. It's blocking the isolated pawn. So sometimes what white will do is they'll play bishop b5 check. And if you play bishop d7, how stupid white would be to take you. You take back, and then you take this. Amazing position for black. Temporary pawn sack. But after bishop here, white will play a far more intelligent move, which is bishop to c4. And you'll realize that the knight can no longer come to that square. It can now not even go to that square. The bishop doesn't even want to be on that square. It would rather be on c8 so that the knight could take on d5. So you brought the bishop to the worst possible square on the chessboard, and you can see that white has a significant advantage here. We're hanging on to that pawn. So there are a lot of examples where sometimes you just throw a check in because you actually want to bring the piece out. You know, how much sense does that make? I'm trying to think of another example, but let's say even something as ridiculous as the London system. Right? So, someone might play the move c5 here. Okay? So they play c5, right? And then after the move c5, there's something interesting that you can play as white. Does anyone want to guess? Based on what we're talking about? Yes, you guys got the hang of it. Does that start to make a little bit of sense? Bishop b5 check, because guess what? You know the bishop wants to go there. It doesn't want to go there. So if you play bishop b5 check, and your opponent plays knight d7, well, we have a very specific good move here. And we're already winning material. And if black goes there, well then you say, okay, I wanted to go to d3 anyway. You didn't want to go to d7. You wanted to go there. Now you're in this dumb position where you almost want to bring it back. Okay, so you're starting to get the idea. Have you ever seen the Catalan, right? 
opening makes a lot of sense. We've all uh, seen it before. So in this position, this is the main line of the Catalan. Now what does black play as the main line of the Catalan? Black plays bishop b4 check. What does white play as the main move in response? White plays this. And what does black do after that? The top engine move, bishop to e7. Now why the hell did black go here to force white to go there and then go back? I could have just played bishop e7 and the bishop would have been on c1. Well, all the exact same things that we just talked about. This bishop now doesn't have the option to go to b2. Now you're forcing your opponent to develop the bishop on that diagonal. This opening has been studied enough that they're saying, okay, it's actually worth it to force white to develop his bishop here. Bishop on d2 is not a good square. That's not a forever square, right? This bishop is eventually going to have to go to a real square, like f4, like g5. So if you're going to have to move this piece again anyway, it's not that useful that it's on d2. The fact that it's on d2 actually only confirms that when you do need to place it on a good square, you don't have it on c1 where you can choose this, this, you know, any of these squares. You don't have as much choice. All that black has done here is restricted the amount of squares you can now put your bishop on to pretty much just these. Because there's nothing going on on this diagonal. So that's why black plays bishop b4. Force you to move the bishop, and now bishop b2 is not an option. So it's all the same, it's all in the same vein, same concept. Give this check and go back. So if we look at our game now, right, I played bishop here, but if the bishop went here, I would move my bishop back. Because now this knight can't develop to any square. It would be stuck on g1. The bishop also wants to go there. Doesn't want to go there. And now the knight's blocked. So this is like now, you know, the worst possible position for white. Everything is wrong. So we look at how the game continues. We go for e5, which I think is very energetic and good response uh, to, to white's play. And I'm not saying that this is once again the exact same concept, but I want to point out it looks familiar. We played bishop b4. Now, what do we know about white? White wants to put the bishop there. This is almost the same concept as me checking. Yes, white can play this, but you'll notice that after bishop b2, it's like big issues, right? Queen a5 and white's losing a piece. So really, white should have probably gone for bishop d2, right? In order to block the pin. I would definitely, I mean, this doesn't really have anything to do with the concept, but the fact that there's an engine line here that the computer loves, which is based on the fact that that's hanging, I think is pretty irrelevant to the concept. The concept is white is never going to play this move because they don't want to. Right? This is already a concession. If I can get my opponent to play that when they want to play that, it's the same as getting them to play this when they want their bishop there. These bishops look stupid on these squares when you've played g3 and b3. Imagine you're playing the king's Indian. Right? And you're supposed to put your bishop there. And then all of a sudden you just play e6 and you put your bishop there. And, you, and then it's like, what the hell was that for, dude? <laughs> what? It's just a weakness. Doesn't make any sense. It's awful. So that's basically what happened to white in this game twice. Right? In this case, he did put the bishop where he wanted to, but it was at a cost, which was essentially a, a full piece. And the rest of the game was more just like hunting the king. And now we just set up our checkmate. And we got it with a pawn. So, I think this game was a little bit more about being active, but also just punishing mistakes. We saw b3, and that was already like a free pawn, and then we saw g3, and it's like, okay, that's a little bit too much. That's too many, too many blunders. Should be able to punish that in the opening. And the moves that I made to punish my opponent in this game, I don't think they were that weird. Right? E5 was the only, like, pretty serious aggressive move, but 
for the most part, I was just developing, but I was trying to do it with tempo. And then by the time we won a piece, the game's already over. Right? E5 is the very tricky move. Tactically sound because of this. So definitely that's a move that you know you might not find in your game. But even if you didn't and play E6, I mean, black is doing amazing here. You're going to do the exact same thing. Bishop there, queen there, maybe knight d5, castle, knight to d7. I mean, e6 is a fantastic move as well. So, even if you don't play e5, I don't think that takes away from uh, how good the position is.